It's early morning. Zdravko Krivokapic, Prime Minister of the Republic of Montenegro, is heading to a river near the capital. He wants to check on the situation there. What a sin they're committing here. They is the company working here, suspected to be part of Montenegro's construction mafia. He catches them in the act. Every day they steal gravel and sand from the Moracha River. They take tons of it in order to make concrete and millions in profits. In what other country would the prime minister himself take the fight against corruption into his own hands? For the prime minister and his environment minister, the matter is clear. Gravel extraction has been prohibited here since 2019, as these signs make perfectly clear. The police are standing over there, 200 meters from here, but they don't dare to stop the passing trucks, because right now the mafia is stronger than the police. At first the worker plays dumb. Then he promises to report the accusations to his superiors. But everyone knows that nothing will happen. Is the prime minister fighting a losing battle? Rampant corruption has long been the scourge of the Balkans. And the Republic of Montenegro, with its 630,000 inhabitants, has been no exception. For a long time, the country's fate was controlled by this man, Milo Djukanovic of the Democratic Party of Socialists. For 30 years, he's been the country's most powerful man. The 59-year-old was Montenegro's longtime prime minister. He's now president. Among those boosting his career was Serbian ex-president and war criminal Slobodan Milosevic. That didn't seem to harm his image in Western Europe. In 2017, he led his country into NATO. Meanwhile, it was an open secret that he and his family were systematically enriching themselves from state coffers. But he seemed to be accepted both at home and abroad. Until 2019, that is. At the time, Djukanovic tried to nationalize the property of Montenegro's Serbian Orthodox Church. In religious Montenegro, tens of thousands protested led by one of the country's bishops. Please do not clash with the police. We will behave peacefully and civilly. Thank you for your support. The result was defeat for Djukanovic's party in the subsequent parliamentary elections. Enter Stravko Krivokapic, a mechanical engineering professor and political unknown. Considered incorruptible, the 63-year-old won, becoming prime minister. His supporters are united by a desire for rule of law governance and European Union membership. This government came together in December 2020. The thing for us is zero tolerance of corruption. But to fight corruption, the government needed the police and other authorities. The problem was, those institutions were filled with the same people as before. That's the complaint raised by civil society. The NGO MANS is a leader in the fight against corruption. Its director, Vanya Chalovic, regularly receives death threats. For 30 years since the collapse of communism, people have been waiting for change and the restoration of the rule of law. We're still waiting. Nobody thinks justice will prevail. Criminal clans continue to battle for influence in Montenegro. They build hotels and casinos on the country's coast, often without permits. These are likely used to launder profits from cigarette and drug smuggling. Thanks to the Panama Papers, which lifted the lid on illegal shell companies, Vanya Chalovic was able to prove how Djukanovic attempted to hide his wealth. There's a circle of President Djukanovic's relatives and close friends who are getting rich to this day. It's not right. We have to fix it, and not just for the sake of Montenegro. What we're seeing in this country is also happening in Bosnia and Serbia. If we solve the problem here, it will be possible elsewhere, too. 
That's why what's happening in Montenegro is so important. Chalovic is researching a prestige project she believes is making Djukanovic money, the construction of a highway. In the distant future, it will connect the Montenegrin coast with Serbia. But for now, it's a half-finished road to nowhere, with almost no connections to the existing road network. On his lunch break, Prime Minister Krivo Kapic inspects the construction site. He does this several times a month. It's pretty amazing that this highway, at 40 kilometers long, is currently the most expensive one in Europe. In 2014, China gave Montenegro a loan worth nearly a billion euros. It guaranteed the construction, which was supposed to be completed two years ago. It's still not done. According to the contract, there should be thousands of Chinese workers here. It's come out that a large part of the loan went back to China, to the Chinese workers who were apparently never in Montenegro. Several things seem to be wrong with this major construction project. For one thing, China is apparently billing for work that was never done. There are no Chinese here. He's told that the Chinese workers are on their lunch break. It's the same every time. The government also believes that subcontractors with connections to President Djukanovic, such as Baymax, are making money from the project. They take over parts of the contract at apparently inflated prices. This section is still under construction, but there are no Chinese people working here either. These are people from Baymax. The route currently serves no purpose. Meanwhile, the country is groaning under the burden of repaying the Chinese loan. And none of the companies involved seem to care about the environmental damage. You used to be able to drink the river water, not at the source, but here, from the river. But by the bridge here, you can see the destruction of the riverbed, of the Tara River. At times like this, even the Prime Minister can feel pretty powerless. It's Prime Minister's hour in Parliament. Krivo Kapic doesn't have a stable majority, but budgetary discipline is prevailing, bringing double-digit economic growth. We haven't had a single scandal. When you socialists were in government, there was a scandal every year. The camp around Djukanovic rejects these accusations and goes on the counterattack. The country's former prime minister, a Djukanovic ally, hopes to return to power. The way the current government talks to political rivals and to the public has led to growing tensions, misunderstandings and division. Never in its history has Montenegro been as divided as it is now. His opponents see the prime minister as an agitator. But impatience is also growing among the population, especially since many have become unemployed during the pandemic. It hasn't gotten better, not at all. I'm worried that everything is getting more expensive. We'll see what happens. This afternoon, Prime Minister Krivo Kapic is on the way to the Moracha Monastery. He wants to pray privately. Afterwards, he explains his situation to some monks. Everyone expects something to happen immediately. What you want to change is one thing, what you are able to change is another. My room to maneuver is small. Hardly anyone understands that. But it's better to use that small room to maneuver. There's just enough time for a quick photo. We like him and pray for him. That's the important thing. All the best. Krivo Kapic may well need those prayers. 
In 2003, in neighboring Serbia, another prime minister took a stand against the mafia. Zoran Djindjic ended up being shot dead. Does that scare Krivo Kapic? I will tell you why I am not afraid. As a child, I learned that not a hair falls from a man's head without it being God's will. I believe that. Grifo Kapic can certainly rely on one social group, the Orthodox Church. The clergy are grateful the new government put a stop to President Djukanovic's plans to expropriate the church. The governments of the last 30 years have promoted corruption and the influence of criminals. If nothing is done against this evil, against corruption, then at some point society will no longer know good from bad. The Prime Minister's last appointment of the day is a visit to the Supreme Court. Police have seized tons of cocaine in a raid, and he fears that bribery will land it back on the black market. I think it would be in the interest of citizens to burn these drugs. Only a small part should be preserved as evidence for the trial. The judges see it differently. All the cocaine should be preserved as evidence. And the interference of a prime minister in the work of the courts is not allowed in a constitutional democracy. After all, the communist times, when judges were like an extension of the party machinery, are over. But what should Krivo Kapic do if he suspects the courts themselves of bending the law? Finally, the end of a 14-hour day. The Prime Minister has five children and two grandchildren. His wife wouldn't have minded if he had stayed out of politics and remained a professor. But as long as he's able, Krivo Kapic wants to prove that there can be a Balkans government that cannot be bought. <laughs>